This video will explore the delta function and the complex exponential as related by the discrete time Fourier transform. First, let's find the DTFT pair of a shifted delta function. Let delta of n minus k be the input to the DTFT. Plug the input function into the discrete time Fourier transform equation and simplify. Note that delta of n minus k is 0 except when n equals k when it is 1. Therefore, we can disregard the summation except for the case when n equals k. We are left with the result that capital X of e to the j omega is equal to e to the negative j omega k. And so we have shown that the DTFT pair of delta n minus k is e to the negative j omega k. To illustrate, let's plot the pair as related by the DTFT. This is a time-saving, arbitrary choice as it would be equally illustrative to plot the pair as related by the inverse DTFT. x of n is 0 at all integers except when n equals k, which is a lollipop of height 1. We know the output of the DTFT will be complex in this case, so we will plot it in both polar and Cartesian coordinates for completeness. In polar coordinates, note that the magnitude is a constant 1 for all omega and the phase has slope k. In Cartesian coordinates, recall Euler's formula to split the complex exponential into real and imaginary parts. In part one, we showed that the time domain function delta of n minus k has the DTFT pair e to the minus j omega k, meaning that the DTFT of a shifted delta function is a complex exponential and the inverse DTFT of a complex exponential is a shifted delta function. In part two, we examine the case of the inverse DTFT of a shifted delta function. Let delta of omega minus k be the input to the inverse DTFT. Plug the input function into the inverse discrete time Fourier transform equation and simplify. Note that delta of omega minus k is 0 except when omega equals k when it is 1. Therefore, we can substitute k for omega and pull the complex exponential out of the integral. Note that the integral and the 1 over 2 pi factor simplify to 1. We are left with the result that x of n equals e to the j k n and so we have shown that the DTFT pair of e to the j k n is delta omega minus k. Note the symmetry of this pair with the pair we derived in part one. This is often referred to as reciprocity, although it is in a very weak form and not a mathematical definition. Reciprocity will play a much larger role once the discrete Fourier transform is introduced. Let's plot the pair as related by the inverse DTFT. Again, this is a time-saving arbitrary choice as it would be equally illustrative to plot the pair as related by the DTFT. Capital X e to the j omega is a wholly real function, so we only need a single plot to illustrate it. However, because functions in the frequency domain are usually complex, it is convention to plot real functions as if they were complex. In polar coordinates, we illustrate the absolute value of capital X e to the j omega as an impulse of area 1 at omega equals k, and the phase of capital X e to the j omega as 0 for all omega. In Cartesian coordinates, we illustrate the real part of capital X e to the j omega as an impulse of area 1 at omega equals k, and the imaginary part as 0 for all omega. We know the output of the inverse DTFT will be complex in this case, so we will plot it in both polar and Cartesian coordinates. In polar coordinates, note that the magnitude is a constant 1 for all n, and the phase has slope k. In Cartesian coordinates, recall Euler's formula to split the complex exponential into real and imaginary parts. I did make a sort of error in the derivation of this DTFT pair. Hopefully, you caught it before I did. If not, remember that, by definition, capital X e to the j omega is periodic with period 2 pi, so it cannot be equal to a single delta function. 
It can, however, be equal to a delta function that repeats itself with period 2 pi. So assume instead that the input is the summation of delta functions shifted by k and repeating every 2 pi. Luckily, because the inverse DTFT only integrates over a 2 pi interval, the result is the same. My error speaks to the fact that, as you become more familiar with the DTFT, you start to think in 2 pi intervals and ignore the underlying definitions, which is always a danger.